So I introduce Matt. Well, thanks, Sean. Thanks, comrades, for the invitation to speak. Uh, and I want to touch on some of the, uh, the wider political debate going on in the, in the movements and the relevance to me of the ideas of socialism to the struggles that are taking place today. My union was founded in 1918. And uh, like many unions founded either then or just uh, earlier, it was founded by people who were socialists, who saw the need to organise in our workplaces to fight for decent conditions, to improve wages, health and safety and so on, but who also saw the need for a wider struggle to change the world. And that's why in our rule book, the preamble to our rule book makes clear that the uh, Fire Brigade Union is part of the international working class movement and its ultimate aim is the bringing around of the socialist form of society. And <laughs> if you were looked at trade union rule books 20 years ago, you would have found actually many unions had such a preamble in their rule book. I think today there's probably two, and uh, myself and uh, Steve probably represent those two unions because we've been through a process of so-called modernisation in the unions where we've been told to wake up and get real and realise that the market is inevitable uh, and the most efficient way of delivering goods and services and so on. Uh, and then, of course, it all comes crashing and tumbling down in 2000 and two th 2007, 2008, with the banking crisis. And I don't need to speak to you about the attacks that are taking place on workers. You're living it and fighting it every day. And the truth is, to me, the debate around austerity in all its forms is the central political debate today. The debate around whether we can continue to have public, publicly accountable, decent public services, whether workers need to accept wage cuts, a tax on their pensions and the rest, or whether there is an alternative. And that debate is international. The, uh, the, the issue has been mentioned already of South African miners. The South African miners, the Greek, uh, Greek workers, steel workers in France, miners in Spain, all of these are affected. Those struggles arise out of the crisis in the international uh, economic system. And so we need to put centre stage the debate around what sort of system we live in. And part of that change in the trade union movement, the so-called modernisation, is also reflected politically in the Labour Party and, uh, and elsewhere. But it also influences workers' uh, capacity and confidence in fighting back. Because if everyone, if everyone at the top of the political establishment is saying there is no alternative, that in turn can have an impact on our people in their ability to fight back. So we at the grassroots level, in our workplaces, in our colleges and schools, in our local communities, we're going to have to fight to create an alternative of our own. And my argument, my argument is that so far, so far the debate within the Labour movement has been uh, less than adequate. I came into politics in the 1970s when we were going through a time of crisis. And at that time, in the, in the Labour movement, there were debates about public ownership. There were debates about industrial democracy, about how we should actually run our workplaces. I have to say that today those debates have been uh, forced back. One of the first industrial disputes I got involved in was in 1980, a factory in Eccles called Gardeners, where it was threatened with closure and the workers took over the factory and said, you're not closing our factory, we're, we're taking control of it. And that's how they fought back. In the, in the 70s and 80s, we had workers with that level of confidence because behind them were those ideas that there was the possibility of an alternative form of society. We've got to establish those ideas again today. We uh, have had an interesting debate, for example, on the question of tax in the Labour movement uh, and quite rightly pointed out £130 billion, pounds, uh, the tax gap in the UK, either uncollected or avoided or evaded by big business, by the banks and billionaires. <coughs> you take the banks, bank bonuses, I did a meeting in 2007 when bank bonuses were at £7 billion at that time. Well, bank bonuses last year, £13 billion after they've been through a so-called crisis. And you think about the cuts, I was in Leeds yesterday demonstrating against cuts in the West Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Service 
Well, the whole of the UK Fire and Rescue Service, with all our so-called bloated uh, salaries and bloated public sector pensions, the whole of it costs £3 billion a year to run, all over the UK. And yet they can hand out £13 billion in Christmas bonuses, effectively, to people who are already millionaires and multimillionaires. So that argument makes clear, that argument and the tax gap argument make clear that the resources in society do exist, but the real fact is that those resources and that wealth and that power are actually in the wrong hands. So we, in the FBU, we wanted to take that debate a little bit further, and we began a discussion internally on the question of the banks. Everyone in society all over the world knows that the banks sparked the international crisis and lie behind the idea that austerity is necessary, that we need to take cuts in wages, in public services, in pensions and so on. So we started a debate internally about the banks and we went to the TUC this year with a motion, uh, which, two motions apparently, a, a general, two uh, interestingly, a, a general council statement on banking and the FBU motion, both of which carried a little bit of a contradiction, I have to say, because the TUC General Counsel motion calls for greater regulation for the separation of investment and retail banking. Our motion calls for the public ownership of the leading banks and financial institutions under democratic, public, uh, accountable uh, control. Because, in our view, we need to start challenging the question of who actually owns and controls our economy if we want to take our struggle forward. The truth is, if you listen to Labour and the Tories and the Lib Dems, it's all about, well, can we get the, back, the economy back to growth? Can we get employment? The economy doesn't exist to produce growth. The economy doesn't, for that matter, exist to produce jobs for anyone. Unless we grasp that the economy exists to produce profit for a tiny class, then we'll never realise what we need to do to challenge and to fight back. And the austerity agenda, the austerity agenda is about restoring and maintaining the profitability for the capitalist class. And which the record of history shows that in every single crisis, the, the ruling class will restructure the economy to serve their purposes. We bailed them out. The taxpayer bailed them out £133 billion in 2008. At the, the peak risk to the taxpayer, to your money, your, the, the contribution of you, your friends, your families, your workmates, £1.2 trillion. Well, we're saying that's our money. Instead of restoring the banks to profitability and then handing them back to the same spivs who got us into this mess in the first place, we demand that the Labour movement takes on the demand of taking over those banks, putting them into public ownership and running them as a public service in the interest of all. And we're not saying, and I'll finish on these, we're not saying that this is the only part of a solution, but we do believe that taking over the banks is central to any debate about genuinely controlling the economy. It's about challenging the whole argument that we've heard for 30 years, in fact, throughout capitalist history, that there is no alternative. Socialism is the alternative. We need to establish those ideas in our workplaces, in our communities. It lies behind the struggle of people across the world, whether it's Spanish miners, French steel workers, South African miners, the workers in Greece, or those struggling to defend our communities here in the UK today. We have an alternative. For us, that's a socialist alternative. Thanks very much for listening, and good luck with the rest of the round. <laughs>